This is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right, so um, somebody asked me on shift yesterday why we don't use IV Tylenol. Because I'm sure some of you may work in other places that do use IV Tylenol, and there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm, generally, I would say, amongst medical community right now about IV Tylenol. And, you know, I've had a back and forth with the hospital pharmacy and therapeutics committee for some time about this question. And there was a relatively recent study that looked at this very nicely. So uh, I'm going to speak just very briefly about a, a randomized controlled trial of IV versus oral Tylenol in Australian emergency departments published in October. Very nice study. I think it was the Academic Emergency Medicine Journal where it was published. The author's name is Frick. So they took uh, basically 80 people and randomized them to either get IV or oral Tylenol one gram in an ER, so kind of a similar population to what we see, obviously. They had kind of a 30-30-30 mix of like musculoskeletal, i.e. broken bones, versus GI, i.e. like renal colic or something like that, versus kind of miscellaneous causes of their pain. And basically what they found, guesses? All the same. same. It doesn't matter whether you get it IV or oral. There was no difference in like their pain at a four hour time window, their initial pain scores based assessed on like visual analog scores. So while IV Tylenol is not that expensive, the acquisition costs for hospitals in the US are about $30 a dose as opposed to like 10 cents a dose for oral Tylenol. The charges for patients are typically hundred time multiples of that. So there are real costs associated with IV Tylenol, mostly passed on to payers and patients, not not necessarily eaten by by hospitals. But I think based on this study, it kind of supports what I've been kind of told and pushed back on by P&T committees in the hospitals now for a couple of years, which is that while IV Tylenol sounds pretty sexy, there really isn't a lot of evidence to say that it's any better than just a a gram of of PO Tylenol. So I have to say this does change how I think about practicing. It hasn't been available to me. I've never practiced with IV Tylenol. Based on this, I probably won't. So thank you. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.